Hi everybody, welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm here today, um, a little bit early, to do uh, my Facebook Live. And uh, I thought I'd share, so I'm doing this demonstration on a team meeting coming up. So I thought I would, one, practice, but also show you all the soft pastels assortment from Stampin' Up. Another, um, another technique or another way to color to add to your coloring library. Um, so yeah, I, I saw these, uh, they're in the new catalog, the annual catalog, and I couldn't resist them. So I hope that I'm just checking to see that one, I can see that I'm live. Looks like I am live. Hopefully you can hear and see me. Um, give me kind of a thumbs up if you, if you can, um, and then I'll get started. So um, yeah, looks like I am live. So let me just switch over, figure out where I am here. All right. So now, oh, there's Kathleen. Kathleen, good. Okay. All right. So let me show you the, these are the soft pastels assortment. And I don't have my catalog in front of me to tell you what page they're on. But they come with, let's say, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight different colors. Um, Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight. Oh, not in order. <laughs> that would be good. Gorgeous Crepe, Granny Apple Green, uh, Mango Melody, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, and Poppy Parade. So great colors and some nice bright colors to use. When I saw, so one thing about them is they are, when I saw pastels, I thought about the pastels were kind of that soft, oily, textured crayon that I used to, uh, I loved to play with when I was in school. These are actually more chalk than they are what I, than, than what I would call a pastel. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I guess that's just a difference. So for me, these are more like chalk uh, to play with. Oh, good, great. Hi, Maxine, hi, Lynette, hi, Janet, great. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways to play with these and to use them for coloring. So let me just show you one. So I've got some stamps here. So I'm going to start by stamping this. This is the free as a bird stamp. And I'm going to start, and I'm just going to stamp this on a piece of basic white cardstock. So you can use these to just color um, with. So I'm going to start with maybe Daffodil Delight, and I'm going to color some of the birds. So it's really just like a piece of chalk. And you can go in and just color and I don't know if you can actually see, but you will get a dust like, like you would with chalk. So I'm just going to kind of go in and, and color. And I'm not really worrying about following the lines, but I'm just actually laying some color down. So there's a different ways to, um, to apply this. Because this is a really small area. Oh, page 126. Thanks, Maxine. Yes, I should have had my catalog. Um, because this is a really small area, I'm using a Q-tip. And so I've added just some color down and then I'm just going in and using the Q-tip to kind of go in and apply the color. Now, this is layerable. So if you don't have it dark, as dark as you would like it, um, you can go back and and add some more color in. So I'm gonna rather I'm gonna go in with the mango melody color and just add some some of the darker color. And so it's a lot like using blends. So you can just go in and and layer the different color in on top of it so that you can start to see the the differences. And the same as you would with, um, with the blends, 
you can also go in and add in different colors. So I'm just going to add some blue onto the kind of breasts rather than mix these up. Now you can use your sponge daubers um, as well uh, to add color. So you can use your stamp or your blending brushes, and I'll show you that in a minute. And if you go over the lines, so I've got, you probably can't see that, um, an eraser works really well just to take that off. So you don't have to worry. So there's my, my yellow birds with the blue. And then I'm going to go in with the green and do this is the mossy meadow, do the branch. There isn't a brown. Maybe they'll come out with more colors, but. I have to order some sponge daubers because I went to use my sponge daubers and realized mine are looking awfully sad and I didn't have any new ones to use. So there's mossy meadow for the branch. And then, now actually I'm going to show you a different technique. I forgot to grab. So you can use a blending or a, a what do they call a blender pen and you can just pick up um, some color off of the, the the chalk or the pastel and you can color the same as you would with reinkers um, so if you've got a really fine little space or a fine you know a little tiny image you, you can use your blender pen to just pick up some color directly off the pastel and color. And then as with always on the blender pens, just rub it off on your, on your grid paper um, to get it to, to the color to come off. Now I'm gonna do the same and I'm gonna pick up Granny Apple Green and do the leaves. Now you can spend more time on this than I'm actually doing in color. And like I said, you can keep, let this dry and you can go back over it with different colors or add in, you know, in more depth of color as you want to. All right. So there's my my uh clean that off so that's the image now if you want to add some background image so if i take the coastal cabana and i'm just kind of going to go in and add some color around my image and like i said i'm not really worried too much about i'm just adding the color down and we'll go in and blend it Now I'm going to take a blending brush. Now I haven't cleaned my blending brushes. So I need to do that, but you can just go in and take a blending brush and go in and blend that. Like that. And it just adds some color and you can add more if you want in areas that you aren't dark enough. Let's see. Uh, blue and orange will give you brown. That's true. Um, do you? How do you clean your blender pan? You just take it and keep wiping the edge, um, wiping the tip until it it's it may still look like there's color on it, um, like this one. But when you just keep rubbing it and and when you get no color on your your grid paper or your scrap paper, it's good to go. Well, hi, Sandy. Yeah, isn't this fun? I just love coloring. And so this is just another one. Now, let me show you a cool technique. If you want to rip this, and I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna tear this. And I want to get some. So 
So you, this is you can use your um, use the the pastels to do some um, some distressing. So I've got this torn image, and now let's see what color. Maybe we'll use this one. This is the Knight of Navy. You can just take and rub along the edges. to distress this and to get some color. And I'm just gonna take and just take with my blending brush, just kind of take some of that darkness away. Now, there is chalk all over the place. So you have to be careful. I discovered um, that you want to, um, if you're gonna stamp, you probably wanna put down a clean piece. But isn't that kind of a really cool way, a very easy way to get a distressed look um, on your on your image? Um, okay, so let me just show you quickly. Um, this is a card that I made. So I've used the hand pen and I've just gone in and colored my images. On this one, I didn't worry if I was going over, over the edges um, with it. I did take my eraser and erase a little bit of it. Um, and then I just did the yellow along the edge. Here's another one that I did. I actually like the one I just did better. <laughs> but this is another one I did with the, the free as a bird. Um, so those are a couple of ways you can do it. Now, let me show you another way to use them. So I'm going to use this is the Butterfly Brilliance, and I've got Versamark here. So I'm going to just ink up my stamp with Versamark. Now I'm going to put this down on top, and I'm just going to rub it down so I get my, my images. Now you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to lift this off. And now you can take, what color shall I do? Let's do this one. And you can just take and use the whole side, use the side and go over and start applying color. Something is underneath there. Oh, I've got a... And then take a blending brush and just blend. But you probably want, you want to make sure that the all of the Versamark is covered before you you do this. So you get a very subtle, um, oh, hi, Glenda, a subtle background. Um, that you can use as a as a background and just use your blending brushes to uh, to take some of that ink off. And if you wanted to go back in and and just do some coloring, for example, on on your butterflies. I said I'm not really worrying about about uh, doing it. I'm just kind of adding some extra color in, and and then going back over it with my blending brushes to kind of smooth it out. So that's just a really pretty pretty background image. So let me show you a card that I made. So this is using the granny apple green and with black. I just love how bright this color is. And so I did exactly the same technique. Again, I kind of like it with the two tone. <laughs> I don't know, always second time. Um, so that's that technique. Um, and now I have one more technique to show you that I, on how to do it. So this is I've got a um, piece of black and I have embossed it using the Pretty Flowers embossing folder. And I am now just going to take, what color shall I do? Let's use the Poppy Parade. Just take your Poppy Parade or whatever color and just go over your embossed image. Oh, you're, yeah, you're embossed. Then take a blending brush. Now this will take a lot off. So if you want it to be, have more. So this actually just adds a bit of a color to it. So you, 
if you want to add more like I've done on my sample, you can just kind of go over it again. Um, the trick with this is you need to fix the, the chalk down. And so if you want to leave it like this, where it's got some darker, darker shades, you can get a fix, I can't kind of fixative, I guess it's called. I'm just using hairspray. And so I'm just gonna spray, spray it. Now it did take some of the color away, but once this dries, um, your, oh, it smells nice. <laughs> it, once this dries, you will be able to touch this and the, the chalk doesn't rub off. If you don't fix this with something, your chalk will completely rub off and that's not what you want. The last thing you want is to give a card and then they get their hands covered with chalk. You do want to have um, some baby wipes handy to be able to wipe your hands on. So I made this card, um, I used the, I think Daffodil Delight and I've just stamped um, and put a sentiment on it uh, with this one, but I, I really like the, the Poppy Parade. All right, one card, I'm not gonna show you actually how I, uh, to make this one, um, well, actually I can, <laughs> I will show you how I made this card, I'm not sure why. So I've used again the, the, um, the, the uh, Butterfly Brilliance, and this one, instead of using Versamark, I'm using um, Craft Ink, the Whisper White Craft Ink. So I'm just going to ink up my, my uh, butterflies with white Craft Ink. So this is kind of like the, the chalkboard technique. So use a piece of black uh cardstock, basic black cardstock. I always find it easier to, um, on these really big images, to, to ink up from, from the top and then also stamp instead of trying to hold this really big block in my hand, which never seems to work out. Okay, so now I've got my, my chalked image and now I can go in and just color again the butterflies and I'm going to use you could use sponge daubers on this um, like I said I have to buy some new ones but I'm just going to use some some q-tips and now just kind of apply that that color again you can keep going over this and make it as as dark as you want. Right. So that's how I did this one, that I cut it out, cut all my butterflies out using the die. And this is the, the um, card I created. So then I just, pop these up onto a piece of basic white cardstock, um, put some poppy parade behind it and a sentiment. Um, you could probably, I did spray this with hairspray so that um, the, uh, the um, uh, chalk wouldn't come off um, as much as, as it would have had I not done that. All right. So let's see, are there any questions? No, not so far. So let me just switch back. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. I just, you know, I bought these, I hadn't used them and I decided, gosh, Melva, you really need to play with this and see what you can create. And I've had such fun. So um, some of you, if you're move, going on to the Canada Ink Sup team meeting in a little bit, you're gonna receive this demo, but you recognize that you were my practice. practice practice demo first but um i hope you enjoyed it i'd love to see your projects if you have these or you're thinking about buying them i'd love to see what you create with them because they are really fun um and like i said i thought they were more like the oily pastels that we i had as a kid um but they definitely are chalk and so lots of fun to play with um don't forget to share your uh, projects using hashtag may share 2021 i will do another prize draw at the end of the month from everybody who shares projects 
uh, and we'll send something in the mail to you for sharing. Um, what else? Oh, uh, just to remind you that this week is a crazy week for me because I am quote unquote traveling virtually uh, to meetings in the UK. So I start meetings at uh, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning you, uh, Pacific time uh, based on time in London. And so I will be pretty much out of commission. So I won't be having my uh, normal class tomorrow night, as well as sketch challenge and mystery challenge on Tuesday and Thursday. So next event is Stamp and Chat on Saturday night at 6.30 Pacific. So hopefully you'll join me. I'll try and pop on um, through the week and, and just let you know how it's going or if there's something new things from Stampin' Up, I definitely will update you. But um, I think I'm gonna be just out of commission with that time change this week. So hope you have a great week. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Bye.